Good evening and welcome to uh, the Monday, April 7th, 2014 meeting of the uh, Park and Rec Commission. Call the meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. Uh, public forum. Rick, what do we have? We have uh, an Eagle Scout project. Uh, you must give a presentation to you folks. Yes. Come up here. I can see. Uh, I have some little packets for you guys. I don't have enough for each of you. Don't worry about it. We can share. We'll share. We'll share. Thank you. We'll share. We'll share. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. I'm Joel Rady from Troop 471 Perfect. here in uh, Guilford. And uh, I'm interested in renewing the garden over here uh, as uh, my Eagle Scout project. And uh, I put a little board together with some visuals, some pictures. I took these pictures um, just a few weeks ago. I know the uh, daffodils have come up recently, so it's not as, it doesn't look the exact same, but uh, it's fairly close. Uh, and there's also some pictures of uh, different plants that we were thinking about putting in on the back. So if you'd like to pass that around, uh, feel free. Um, I will be working with uh, Mr. John Cumming Cunningham from uh, TEC Landscape Designs. Uh, he's given me a design for the garden already uh, and has a list of plants to be placed in it. We have a plan uh, ready to go that you can see on your packets. Um, the first page is a bit of information about the garden and my plans and steps. And on the second page, you can see a uh, layout for the garden. There's some, there's the uh, two beds that are there and some existing lavender bushes. Mm -hmm. We plan on putting some butterfly bushes on the side. Uh, Mr. Cunningham talked about possibly extending it to the uh, bushes uh, to add a bit more space. Uh, Mr. Maynard mentioned that uh, you might want some vegetable gardens for the kids to plant in. So we put that in we can make some raised beds. And, um... Looks great. Yeah. And uh, where's the vegetable garden? We're Did thinking... Lose space here. Oh, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about putting some small raised beds probably in the back or to the side of each of the beds and then the flowers can be around them. Hmm. Awesome. I'm sorry I hogged this. The book stops here, or the portraits, pictures stop. <laughs> we had dedicated this garden and commissioned it to uh, Virginia Zipothy and uh, Julian yep. Cox a couple years back, and it's, it's gotten, it's just turned to weeds. <clears throat> so, Joel come and asked for a project, we looked at this as a possibility, and uh, we can beautify it, I and mean, we have the daffodils in there now. <clears throat> Excuse me, we had some butterfly bushes in the past, which uh, were a real nice attraction, but they got real big, and I think we, they might have died, actually, I think. They were, they were old, we cut them down. But just be a nice addition out there. It looks beautiful. You, it's can, a great uh, you can see on the uh, front page that I put a little uh, budget plan together. <coughs> Mr. Cunningham said that he would donate all of the plants wow. that are necessary. So that is going to take a large amount of money off of it. Uh, as well as the uh, peat moss and bone meal for the fertilizer. He'll be doing that too. So there aren't too many things that require cost. There will be mulch. <coughs> If we decide to expand the garden, there will be uh, edging. Right now, the edging is nice slate, uh, so we can either use that, which would probably slightly more be slightly more expensive than lumber if we used that. Um, so that can be decided. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, other thing is, Mr. Maynard mentioned that you would probably want some bird feeders as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so those will cost a little bit of money. But other than that, I don't believe that there are many other costs at all. Good luck getting a squirrel proof. <laughs> <laughs> the thought is, ex the <laughs> thought is make excellent. A lot of money. That's right. <laughs> we can try. <laughs> we can try. Well, you did a great job, and you Thank did a you. great job with the layout and the presentation. Right. So I think it looks beautiful. I don't know. I guess you're looking for yeah, motion. Yeah, we'll motion. Yep. So um, do before you it, good. Jack. It's a big project. Do you have to recruit other scouts to... Uh... I, uh, all the scouts in my troop have come to all of my friends' Eagle Scouts pro Eagle Scout projects in the past. We have around how many boys total in the troop? 27. 27 total. They won't Ooh. all be coming to work at the same time, but yeah. we'll have a larger yeah, workforce 
if we need it. So, so part of your job is to schedule them and coordinate them. Yes. And Essentially, Jack, his job is not to do the labor. He's supposed to be the Director. Project, yes. project okay. manager. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah. it's not his project to do this. It's his project to oversee. Okay. 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 If I could that's the leadership part of it. Yes. Yeah, great. If I could make a comment, it come to me recently um, through a master gardener that, that um, people are trying to avoid using um, pressure treated lumber that goes touches the ground. Mm -hmm. So I would urge us to use the slate, even if it costs a little more, yeah. because okay. we don't want to do anything that causes any pollution, even the smallest amount. So especially I would agree with that. Gardening. Especially gardening, especially right? Gardening. And, yes. and, yeah. Also, yeah. if we put uh, lumber right next to the already the slate that's already there, it probably wouldn't look as good. Right. So exactly. I would agree with that as well. Exactly. Well, I just, I'd like to make a motion a motion to accept this plan to move forward. Uh, the request was 240 but I would say the motion should be uh, $300. Not to exceed $300. Not to exceed $300. Unless the slate costs more. Well, if the slate costs more, then he can, then, he can come, then back, come and, back and ask us yeah. for additional funds. For additional okay. funds. Awesome. I'll then. second that motion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Good, Good work. Thank, Thank, you. Well, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. And Joel, do you have a timeline when you want to start this? Uh, I'm hoping pretty, pretty soon I have to get it approved with our council. All right, so from here it will go to uh, our our local district and that can take anywhere from two to four weeks to get mm -hmm. approved. Okay. Well, you're still on the right time though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, it's early. I think, you know, we maybe get it started early to, in May would be. All right. And then how long time frame for from start to finish of all the uh, Because I have so many people who can work with me, I'm, it could probably be done in one to two weekends. Oh, so. great. You're yeah. not coming close to the 18 year old uh, clinic. No, I think I'm, I'm pretty good on time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. no, he does. He's not a rush. He's not okay. a rush. He's got That's a. Great. Yeah. He's an eleven o'clock, not eleven thirty. Not eleven thirty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take pictures. Get your board. Board. Yeah. Board. Also, take pictures of your progress as you're doing. Do before and after. Yeah. Yeah. Before and after would be perfect. And just yep. just contact me. We're getting ready to go because we're talking about having our preschool class and our our summer one of our summer camps about the planting of the. Um, the vegetable garden part. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. Thanks. That's definitely in the consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. Right. Thanks again, guys. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good show. Rick, you might want to think about including a senior who comes to the center a lot to just take care of the garden a little bit. Someone who's interested in that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Because it, what happened the last time is we planted it, or I, you know, it yeah. got planted, and then there wasn't really maintenance. And we the weeds got out of control. We, the weeds got out yeah. of control. But you know, if you don't weed vegetables, they'll be gone. And I just think if yeah. there were some seniors who would like to be out there doing that, because um, they're here a lot. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that. And, and we, we had quite a few tomatoes last you know, year. That's one of the problems. Tomatoes, tomatoes that we can oh, give to oh, cooks oh, in the kitchen. They can yeah. use them for salads yeah, for, the, sure. for lunches. Sure. Uh, but so, yeah, yeah, we'll. Uh, and, and Anthony, our new custodian, he he he'd be he'd be out there doing it too. Mm -hmm. He'd help weed. Okay. He didn't know. Okay, staff and director reports. Any questions? I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure there's going to be a question about one particular item. I have a question about item number seven. Um, we have a new parks maintainer, Mark Mazuko. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's that about? I mean, I thought Tony. I mean, I thought that we had someone we hired in in Phil's position. We did, we did. Tony. And that's so that different. Created, uh, that opened yeah. his position. Oh, oh, I so see. So we did interviews for uh, that I position. I see. Okay. Okay. And my second question has to do with the Guilford High School Science Wing. I <laughs> talked to you about this. Where did this come from? Yeah, uh, I was at a meeting last week uh, with the first selectman, uh, school superintendent, facilities manager of the school system, and um, I think Gary McCallany was there. Uh, they, they called me to a meeting, and um, that, that science wing is being turned over to the town, and it, we're told it's coming to our, under our jurisdiction. So there's going to be a weight room in it, which we'll have access to, uh, and I, I made it very clear, are we going to have access for our programs in there? He said, yep. I said, there's going to be parking. We're going to be able to get in here and use it. He said, yes, you can. So it's another facility we'll have available to us to, to schedule and program. Well, here's my issue. Number one, they pull a surprise like that, number one. Um, I had heard rumors, and I asked you about this before the start of this year. Yeah. The second thing that bothers me is it's another facility that we're going to have to own, maintain, maintain, clean, and mm -hmm. monitor. Has that been 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I raised all those. Um, yeah. Well, then I think what the commission needs to have a say in this that we don't accept another responsibility uh, as a department and as overseers of mm -hmm. a department that we need a proposal for our taking this over that includes uh, the issues <laughs> of all the right. issues of maintenance mm -hmm. uh, access responsibility mm -hmm. um, and is there any thought that this would be another shelter that we would be responsible for since it has showers and things uh, like that? I don't think this would. Well, the high you school know, is going to become the next shelter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this may be two years away, so whenever they're going to start taking down the old high school that this happens. So it's not happening soon, you know, right. soon. I don't, I think, some, for some reason I'm thinking they're talking about September of 2015, I think. So it's a year and a half. <coughs> it's just okay, it's just as long as if they tell us it's okay and they approve a budget that allows us to provide the proper maintenance right. and support yeah. for the services right. that we're going to offer and the staffing that we're going to need, I don't have a problem yeah, with that. One thing I said, don't just give me another building. Yeah. Right. So well, we need I want to be, I wanna make sure people understand what I'm yeah. about to say. Don't just give me another building with additional responsibility with no in impact on my budget, mm -hmm. without any planning as to what we're going to use the building for right. and the number of staff people that we're going to need to provide mm -hmm. to support that building. Well, even to do something as simple as do a walkthrough to see what the condition of the building is before yeah. uh, we accept the right. responsibility yeah. of yeah, it. Yeah, what's, what's there, what, what's, there, what's, what's, what's hidden? The yeah. There's, so there's going to have to be well, some really remedial work there being done there. Don't those were the chem labs and the... Uh, yeah, thing? it's the science wing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a big area. Well. Rather than discuss it tonight, my feeling is that we should have um, some kind of a, a written, what, what are they asking us to take on and right. under what conditions? Should it, should we attend? I mean, should one of us attend a, a board yeah, of, that of education comes, meeting? We'll and at least right. at I mean, least one member from the commission, or, 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 just, or Joe and Paul, or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We, yeah. and, and right. And we, if we right. going forward, we would need to be part of that discussion. Yeah. We, we might Man, be a, was, we might be a, a smaller part of a, of a bigger issue, and, and that's that there's going to be a new science wing in the new building, and I think in order to get the reimbursement amount from the state that this town wants, the science wing can no longer the the current science that's wing correct. can no longer longer be used as an instructional area. Correct. So it's going to be fitness room, storage, and rest yes, could, be new enough, could be a new town hall? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it could be to our advantage, but I think they uh, can't just say it's going to be ours when, you know, I think we have to say we want to be responsible. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we Rick, need to know yeah. the terms of that responsibility mm -hmm. in writing so that we can discuss it fully. And yeah. that would include going and taking a tour, mm -hmm. uh, considering how we would use it as a commission um, and as a department. Right, even just I to know find that out how many square feet we have to mm -hmm. be that, responsible. That was my question. Yes. I, I, right. I know that there's an existing weight room in right. that, that where the old structure is a bungalow that's football field. Yes. And, and that's used by pretty, pretty much the high school. Right. Now, are they going to, the high school program, football, whatever, going to use the weight room in the building? We're going to have jurisdiction. Correct. That's one of the questions that we would have and, to yes, have. And is their program yes. going to expand? They would want us to schedule it. We, the, yeah. the idea when we would schedule, just like we schedule any other facility, and, our room, basketball court, okay. I mean, our rooms here, fields, whatever mm -hmm. else. It's, the intent would be, this, again, I, I got all this from the meeting, okay, that we would be responsible to schedule that. They would still want to use it for, Ralph, well, you would know better than I know. Is it just after school? They use it for no, physical classes? Weekends. No, 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 no. That, that, that building is open. They, I'm not going to say 24-7. No, they go at 6 o'clock in the morning. The football early, players to work yeah. Later at night. Yeah, yeah but I'm talking about, like, I mean, during the school the year, though. I know physical like classes use, use it. Too. Well, so, again, I, I think we don't need to discuss it right. now. We just we need, get to get, we need to get the details. Yeah, what the expectations are. Right. Right. Because it seemed to me that that who who is it responsible for a building that they share with someone else that's always an issue i mean is it our building or is it the superintendent of schools building or is it the principal's building or is it the sports director building so um in conjunction with that i've been in that building and judy has i've taught in that that's classrooms that place needs to be gutted yeah okay can, can we rely on you to get that yeah, for us? We're not going to rely on us gutting just it. Just a though. suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to rely on us gutting it. I mean, yeah. if they oh, want no, to no, take no, it no, over. Oh no 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 no! I mean, can we rely on you to? Yeah, um, to I'll get contact us. them and send me right, a letter exactly. and set up a meeting. We, we need, right. You know, a suggestion. When they talk about bathrooms or restrooms, I mean, is that going to include shower rooms, restrooms? Because I know during the year, those restrooms are used for sports activities outside on the weekends. 
Correct. So yeah, we're gonna, there's going to have to be a lot of work done yeah, on this, yeah. and I think yeah. it's premature yeah. now, but we've got to make sure we stay proactive and, and involved with this and let them know what our expectations are. Don't just say the building is yours and then walk right. away. The essence of this is we, we have to agree to take this on, Rick. That, that's what, if from my point of view, we want it conveyed. We, we haven't, this, they cannot just say we're responsible. We, we want to say whether right. we want to be responsible or not. <coughs> and under what conditions? I think that train has left the station, though, Barbara. That what? I think that's been given to us. And we have to make the best of that. I don't see that as all, at, at all. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> it might be a good thing, Jack. Yeah. It, it, it could be a good thing. Because well, we've been wanting to do a fitness thing, but if it's we're going to be cleaning up after all the football well, players. That, that's my point. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and I know uh, I'm going to be my typical type A response. Uh, and. If it becomes my building, I put a padlock on it and lock it mm -hmm. until I get money to operate it, fix it, repair it, or make it a facility mm -hmm. that's good enough for that's us to use. That's what I do. Yeah. So if they don't like that, they can get rid of me as the chairman. No. no. We'll just not <laughs> take the building. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> what? Were you on the Okay. For sure? right. Hold on. Why are you chair down there? <laughs> I, I, before you go, I just have another question for Rick with regard to fields. Are, are, are fields eligible to be used right now? Because I've seen, uh, I know the weather's been off and on. Yeah, most of them. There's uh, rear Long Hill is still wet, and we've told them they can't play on that. And uh, there's part of Chittenden is still wet, but everything else is, is open as of this weekend. Okay. There was a large mound of clay over on Adams yeah, B. Adams B is not, because there's still renovations being done on Okay, that. so yeah. that's, that's still active renovations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm not going to read all the correspondence tonight. I'll read the subject matter that the correspondence is because you know, in some way, shape, or form, all the correspondence is going to come up later on in the meeting. So. Yes, sir. We had a, um, uh, Kathy was nice enough to do a review on us uh, on previous year's commission's meetings with respect to uh, uh, procedures and policies that the former commissions may have established, which will come up later on in the discussion. Then we have a letter of uh, from Baldwin Middle School. What was the word they called, Rick? I missed it. I'm sorry. What was it, Ralph? Oh, the uh, Jacob's speech. They oh, the gave donation. $200. Donation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they gave two hundred dollars, and okay. and Rick responded that he that we would use it towards the bike rack that had some money that already been allocated. I, I, there's a group of kids. By uh, the group of, uh, yeah, it's a group of young kids women. called Blue Wave. I think they're called, right. and they're they it are they're Wave. raising money for the Jacob's speech project. Right. The fifth, great. sixth graders. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. I'm sorry. It was something in between it. Yes, there was. I'm sorry. Yeah, Apologize. yeah, it was out of order. Uh, so that's good news. That's that's three different sources of groups um, yeah. funding the Jacobson <coughs> project mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I uh, have a le letter, uh, which is an agenda item, a uh, piece of correspondence with, with a request to uh, 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 serve or... I uh, have alcohol at Jacob's Beach, and we'll, we'll have that discussion uh, under all business. Uh, a letter from Veronica, which I thought was a fairly positive one. Uh, and the way I read this, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, it's they're making a significant contribution to the fireworks, yes. and whatever residuals we have, uh, we can apply uh, to next year's event. Yes. And it's all pending what happens with the upcoming budget, because we do have yeah. Ten thousand dollars in the budget for right. tomorrow, right. And, and they're suggesting that if we do get the ten grand approved, that maybe we enhance it a little They'll bit. They'll give us an issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's on top of the ten. Correct. Yes, yeah. and it's from the three hundred seventy fifth committee. Okay. Uh, I was not at the last meeting, but approval of the minutes. Um, Jacob's speech project. It says Ms. Robbins stated that she had been unable to attend the last meeting, subcommittee meeting. It's uh, unable to attend the last subcommittee in its entirety. I was there for part of it. Mm. Just, Just an, an adjustment. Any other changes? Uh, yeah. I, Jack? Um, page 5, uh, section D, uh, Nut Plains Park. Uh, the draft minutes report that uh, uh, I reported about the, the standing building committee 
having approved the scoreboard. Right. And actually, it was the Planning and Zoning Commission. Oh, right. Okay. Any other changes? I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes. Second by Barbara. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I abstain since I was not at the meeting. Okay. <laughs> Approval of bills. I move that we approve the bills in the total of $73,954.15 so for the month of March. Uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Old business. Make a quick record on the Sandy Fields Committee. There shouldn't be too much anyway. Uh, no, just uh, working with uh, Jim Portley and the Baldwin drainage project for the upper fields of Baldwin School. Um, we're waiting for Jim to come up with a drainage plan for that. And um, Paul and I are going to, Paul Schmidt and I are going to meet with um, the soccer club to see if they have some money to uh, fund the uh, design for renovations to the upper Cox field. I think we have that in our five year plan to tear up that field and rebuild it. Um, and we're looking to the soccer club to maybe help come up with a bus for the design part of that. So we're going to meet with them, um, I think it's this month sometime. Those are the main things. And, you know, the high school project, baseball field, they're kind of, I, you know, keeping eyes on that and how that's working. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't touch that until they turn it over correct. to us, correct? Yeah, I just met with one of the, <coughs> the one of, somebody from the landscape architect firm today. I was meeting up there about the tennis court project that we're doing, but and I discussed that with them, and uh, yeah, they they know that we're not going on there until they turn it over to us. Okay. Yeah, real quickly, by the way, the money we invested in the drainage up at Long Hill Park has paid its way already. Mm -hmm. The yeah. varsity baseball teams and there was a lacrosse out there this weekend have mm -hmm. been able to practice on on Long Hill and with the weather the way it had been that never would have happened had we not put those trains right. in. Yeah, so that four inches of rain that we had two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. And all the snow. Yeah, it's, away. Really, it's really doing a great job. Gates with Beach, 6B. Um, I spoke to Will Thompson um, and just touch base in terms of where we're at. We're really, we don't have much left, but the construction company will be back in the next week or two to finish up. They have to reset the heads for irrigation and some sod work and so forth. Um, the other thing I had mentioned to him was that at some point we need to um, move forward as far as getting a boulder, making a decision on what granite, boulder, whatever, that we could put the plaque on and then where we want to put it. Um, so we'll be working on that okay. soon. And uh, Ellen's going to be working with him on, uh, I just working with Ellen to help out with the, uh, the benches and the hydronic chairs. We're going we're to start ordering those pretty soon so we can have them for this season. Good. Good. Are we going to harvest one of our own boulders from the town of Guilford, or are we going to <laughs> go to a, a <laughs> quarry? <laughs> how are we going to rock garden? Dogs. 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 They were little pebbles. They got <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right and put water on, let them grow. Yeah. I, I figured I'll let them. Yeah, yeah, okay. But you Will go and to the John and get figure the out what kind yeah. of, okay. what would be a good look yeah. down there. If they, they may have something in mind. Somebody mm. may have one on site from something that they need to find a home for. So <laughs> we'll see. Boulder. No, John Cunningham knows where boulders are. Yeah, I said maybe the one <laughs> that you do. No, he does. It's in Colorado, right? Where, uh, yeah. He, he knows you know, about boulders. Yeah, he might have something on site that, you know, needs to be moved somewhere. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 6C, Chittenden Park Boardwalk. The contractor started two weeks ago. They're making Good. progress there. Um, a lot of the piers have been installed. You know, those diamond piers, those big hubs that they're banging. And, um, they ran into a little problem. The, the, the low spot there was uh, probably about a six inch deep puddle. <laughs> it's starting to dissipate finally, you know. So they're working around that. They do the upper area, the area in front of the puddle, and they're, they're, they're working on it. I, I can't remember what the deadline is, but sometime in May that we told them it had to be completed. Yeah. So they're, they're making progress. <coughs> no birds that need protection have shown up? Uh, no, we're oh, uh, <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> oh, good. Do we have any crabs to worry about at Jacobs? <laughs> Uh, oh, the horseshoe crab. Yeah, uh, uh, we're getting near that season where they mm -hmm. yeah, come up right. on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Be prepared. Town's 375th anniversary celebration. D? I wasn't able to attend the last couple of meetings. Okay. Uh, but uh, we've heard. Vic, Vic might have I, I can comment on a couple things. Yeah. I was at the, the uh, we're involved peripherally with 
the Civil War uh, event on May 31st. I was at the meet a couple of meetings on that. Um, met on the green with the committee you know, about where the stage is going to go, and we're just kind of talking about different where certain things are being staged in addition to the stage uh, on the green. So we're working peripherally with them on that. Uh, and on the um, trails dedication on, on June 8th, we had a couple meetings on that also. And, um, you know, we're going to provide the showmobile down there. and There'll be a sound system that got set up. And they're, they're hoping to invite the governor and U.S. senators. Um, they expect to be a pretty big event. A lot of things going on that weekend. Uh, mm. Trails, hikes, oh, yeah. and, that we're not part of. But, in fact, I think I put in a packet um, yeah, you you did. a list. And what we do with that that uh, flyer, we've sent that out to all the people who uh, are going to sign up. We haven't yet to everybody who's renting a, a boat rack. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of paddle events going on, kayak events. Mm -hmm. And one of my things is going to go from the boat launch, I think, to Chittenden Park. Um, other ones are going up the uh, West River or East River. And um, so those are the things that are happening that day. Uh, Dustin Hugan from our office made this flyer, and they provided the information. He made the flyer. They loved it. Um, and then, we, you know, we, we're going to send it out to all the people who have boat racks, so they're aware of it. So we're, we're, we're just, we're helping with those events. We're, you know, we're part of 375th, but we're involved in some of it. Anybody know how the, uh, the gala went? Uh, I know they had crystal a move. Crystal ball? Yeah, crystal ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard it was good. I heard they had a, about 150 people. Oh, good. I think they said the number was good. Oh, okay. If I was home, I would have gone. Uh, E, Eagle Scout projects. We just had one. I added it already to the list, and, and the rest. Uh, the Chitin, the uh, Jacobs fly, flagpole. Uh, just got an email today from that scout. He gave me a, a cost estimate, which uh, my glasses, my writing here, about nine hundred dollars for the flagpole, and then whatever it costs to install it. Well, they're going to install it, but they might have to buy some concrete or something. So if we, if we can improve, maybe at least buying that, we might be able to. I have to check with. Um, Public Works must have some concrete or something. No? Yeah, but I want to check with um, uh, Sheila and Ann with Will to see where we are, where we are with the, the, the funding for the Jacobs Project. I think mm -hmm. there's still some money there. We might be able to pay for this out of that. Okay. Um, you know, and then maybe some of the benches if we don't have enough funds coming in for that and mm -hmm. some of the other uh, things down at Jacobs. But I'm not sure it'll be a cost to us and maybe I'll come with that. If not, if, if you all agree, then, then we'll take it out of reimbursables, the, the $900 for the flagpole. I think that's all it's going to be. So he's working on that, and the other one is the uh, Chittenden Park landscaping. That's going to be done uh, the weekend of April 26th, 26-27. That's the um, the bocce courts. Yeah. Okay. Tall grasses, and I think John Cunningham's working with us on that project too. I think he's getting uh, maybe three trees to put down there for a little bit of shade. Oh, good, good, because that's what they asked for shade. Yeah. Six F Lake Quantumpog weeds. <laughs> They're still there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, they ain't going nowhere. But the um, we had a uh, a meeting uh, in Joe's office with representatives from DEP and the environmental sp specialist from DEP wasn't there. But it was a phone conference with him. Greg Bugby was there from the uh, Agricultural Experimental Station. He's an expert on pine weeds and. Um, Lakes and um, Jim Portley and Kevin McGee and myself um, and um, <coughs> DEP the input we got actually there was a guy from fisheries from DEP at that meeting also they're not real supportive of doing a drawdown of the lake we all kind of thought that was the probably the most effective thing to do did they give a reason why they're not supportive of it um, environmental impacts you know I mean some weeds that they would like to not get just killed would die um, I guess the fishery guys had some issue with it in terms of like the spawning and all that um, I wouldn't say it's a dead issue yet though because one of them agreed to uh, go on the lake with me in the summer when, when the weeds are bad take a boat out there and see how bad it is mm -hmm. so we're let him paddle let him jump in and have come out with leeches yeah <laughs> <laughs> I told him the leeches were an issue too um, well the state as we know owns the, the water but I think we own the dam the town correct dam. that's correct yeah. Now, <laughs> the next Jack. thing, though, that I just got word today, I got a, from, uh, a request from Joe Mazza to go with him and Jim Porley to meet uh, at the DEP office next week with um, Senator Meyer call, is calling this meeting. I think he's looking at some funding and trying to look at the, Senator Meyer is the chairman uh, of the environmental committee for the legislature. And um, so we've talked to him about this, or I have, I think Joe did, Joe Mazza. 
and see if we can maybe get a little su political support to try to get something going up there. Yeah, it'll be retiring, so, so you want to kind of expedite yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait too long. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> With Mr. Meyer. Uh, so, the, so meanwhile, though, we are moving ahead. We, you know, assuming the money, budget passes tomorrow, we have the money in the budget to do the weeds just in the beach area, the uh, vacuum dredging. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when I spoke with the DEP guys about that, they, they thought that was a good idea. They liked that idea of doing this vacuum dredging. Mm -hmm. Basically, it sucks the weeds out like a big vacuum. It sucks them up in the muck at the bottom of the swim area. Um, and so uh, the plan is to do that uh, in late May, early June. Get that done before the swim season starts. I was going to say, would they close the beach if they? Uh, yeah, I, <coughs> Greg Bugby said we'd have to probably close it for about a week because all the silt is. I, I would expect murky. that. It's murky, you know. So it takes a while for that to settle down. So that's why we want to try to do it in May or June before we open full time. To try to get it done, and uh, so a lot of depends on what happens with the budget tomorrow night. Um, and uh, so I have to write up the RFP to to get quotes and proposals uh, for that. But we've started some conversation with a couple different contractors who do it so we have a little understanding of what they do. It's just out of curiosity, I mean, the DEP must have experience with this in other lakes. Is there a reason why they're dragging their feet with us? The drawdown? Yes. I mean, uh, Rogers Lake over in, uh, what is it, East Old Line. Line. Yeah, yeah they, they drew down their lake because they had to repair the dam that was at uh, Townwoods Roads. But they drew that lake down fairly quickly, repaired mm -hmm. the dam and put it back up again. And there, there are multiple swimming areas around that uh, and um, I just don't understand why they seem to be dragging their feet with us and give rapid approval to other towns to, to get their well, stuff Well, that one's a dry down and fill right back up, right? We're talking about we draw it down, we're leaving it draw it down all winter long okay. for a weed kill. And then, I mean, they, they have to do studies to determine if there's enough water feeding into it so it fills back up. I mean, someone beyond me has to do that, you know? I mean, they got to figure that all, all out. So I think there are a lot of issues like that they're concerned about. It wasn't that many years ago where they did a study Greg Bugby and, and those folks. So, I mean, do we have to reinvent the wheel? I'm, I there mean, there was a study by a guy named Don Ballou, uh, yeah. who I think Kevin McGee has his information, and um, it, it, it was a plant study of what kind of weeds are in the lake, and yeah. Greg has that information, and he's shown it to us. Uh, and there's a bathometry study which shows what the underwater topography is. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, Greg and, and Jim have, have determined that if we can draw down five feet, which they dis determined yeah, we can do with that dam, that would be enough. or rebuilding the dam, it would really be very effective, but we got to get that past the DEP guys. Would that affect the farmland that's south of the uh, the dam? Scranton, Haggard. Um, There's a lot of farm. No, because there. the way they would build it, uh, Jim probably was suggesting a weir system where you just—it's almost like pulling a board out at a okay. time, let it little out, mm -hmm. let a little more, so you're Control. not flooding okay. anybody out down below. Uh, oh, and if I if I don't you don't mind me mentioning. Um, with the vacuum dredging, I spoke with Buster Scranton, who has the farm up there, because we need a place to put all that. It's good compost. He's willing to take it. Oh. So the, the hauling it away sure. would be like a mile or yeah. half mile or something. So that would save a lot of cost yeah. and oh, those time. Those will really add to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we thank him for you know saying yeah. agreeing to accept those if we uh, get that far, we can do with the project. So okay. is, is the vacuum dredging actually <coughs> going to occur, or is that still under study from the DEP? Uh, no, DP, they, over the phone, they said, great idea. They like that. They think it's effective. They were okay. supportive of it. Um, I have an application to Inland Wellens. They've got to approve it. And uh, their meeting is um, next week where they'll accept the application. Or this week, I think, the ninth. But it's just the beach area, not the entire Just lake. the beach area. That's but it's it. contingent okay. upon our budget. No, not it's the DEP anymore. Contingent upon the budget. And Absolutely. The um, okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Good. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing else I'll just say about that is I also talked to Ben Sylvester, who's one of the neighbors who... Uh, has some responsibility for the Choate rowing program, and he was interested in doing something by their boat dock up that area. So I let him know about this and, and said, that, you know, yeah, let me know if you're interested because maybe if they're more than just us doing this, the cost might be less because while they're there, there's a mobilization cost. Mm -hmm. right. Once they're there, if the project is bigger, maybe the cost ends up being less for them and us. Mm -hmm. I said, we don't have money for it just for the beach, but um, but I haven't heard back from them yet. That was about yeah, two didn't weeks you ago. say the Homeowners Association up in the North End was planning to do something? Um, Independently of what we were looking I, I to think, do? Uh, well, I think he was looking into harvesting where you, you kind of cut the weeds and you mow okay. them, basically. Um, Wasn't there a discussion that that promotes more growth? Correct. That it spreads the seeds and then yeah. it's going to be a bigger problem? And DEP is not real excited about that method. Yeah. They told us Whereas the vacuum maybe. method is containing the seeds, it's not as it, Yeah, it vacuums right up. It's like almost like a leaf vacuum, you know? It goes into these bags and they haul them out and they bring them somewhere else. Dump okay. them. 
Okay. So at the very least, this year, if we if our budget passes, we will be able to improve the beach by Correct. using that vacuum method yes. and get okay. rid of the weeds okay. that are right yeah. at the yeah. beach that we have. And, and it's also as long as Inland Wetlands approves it next week. Oh, they still, walk okay. It. Yeah. Okay. Is there any foreseeable issue with that, or does it seem that that I don't think so, because you know, I've talked to Kevin McGee about it, and he was at that meeting when DEP said that's, you know, it's a good approach. Okay. So okay. we hope that they will go smoothly. Do we have to put that on their agenda for the next meeting? Or? It's, I, I, I it's already, already, like it's already on the agenda. Yeah. Oh. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're making progress in that. 6G, field use fees. You want to take that, John? Sorry, I missed the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was a rather productive meeting, Doug. There was uh, Mark Donovan, uh, Chip uh, Dorwin, uh, Rick, myself, and Susan, who is uh, not here tonight. But the idea is that we went through all the contingencies as to how we should be able to look at the, the organizations that are using the, the fields um, and discuss um, intelligently with a plan as to how much we feel that they should be charged for the use of the fields and whether or not they are affiliated or unaffiliated with the town of Guilford gives us the, um, the, the first tipping point as to how we start uh, assigning the fees uh, towards the individual organizations. I'll let you take it from there to some of the other things. To, well, the, the other thing too is that for profit, for, for profit teams, we're going to be charged a little bit more um, as compared for the nonprofit organizations that uh, uh, would want to use the fields um, uh, for their own uh, <coughs> for their own use. And then, of course, non-resident teams. Those who have less than fifty was it less than fifty percent? Less than sixty. Less than sixty yeah. percent of Guilford participants would be charged a um, a higher rate uh, for the use of the fields. Um, but if you take a look at the the prioritization as to how fields will be assigned, it starts from number one with the uh, the Parks and Recreation, the Adams fields, and those that are affiliated with the 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 Parks and Rec program. Then nonprofit youth um, sports organizations such as Guilford Little League or the uh, Lacrosse Club, uh, nonprofit Guilford Adult Leagues, which are primarily the uh, softball and soccer, uh, which we have in town, adult uh, uh, men's and adult women's uh, teams, and then after that you would have um, anything that's unaffiliated with the with the above. That's the next tier, and then for-profit uh, Guilford teams which is similar to these AAU teams or this one that Ed Green is looking to put together for his own uh, uh, soccer program. And then for the non-resident <coughs> teams, people who would come from out of town say that we would like to use a field for a particular reason, such as the Emerson Soccer Club uh, during the, the, um, the summertime. So as it stands right now, the teams in, the, there are some teams right now that are not paying any fees that we would assess a fee starting with the start of their next operating season. And that would be the, uh, the adult leagues um, in soccer. Because uh, currently they are, uh, they just, they have not been part of the, under our radar to see as to whether or not they were going to be uh, charged a fee. And we determined that a fee for use for them would be um, uh, appropriate uh, for the, for the t times that they use the fields. Um, but the, we wanted to make sure that we had a clear cut. This is a little bit different than what we have with the 15% that we had, uh, uh, we have under our standard policy with <coughs> regard to non-Guilford uh, residents being charged for the use of the other parks and rec facilities. So this is a little bit different as compared to what we're currently using now. Um, the discussion would be as to whether or not you feel that the, the tiers that we have established for the uh, the teams, uh, whether the pricing is appropriate, um, or if you uh, feel that there's um, more or less that can be charged. Uh, when you say non-resident teams, is that non-profit non-resident teams? It would be or under is that for would, profit. It would be under the non-resident teams. They would be the, technically they would be considered to be unaffiliated with Guilford because they would be an out-of-town organization, and then that they have. Uh, they failed the the criteria of having 60 percent of uh, Guilford. So we're not residents. making a distinction between nonprofit and for-profit non-resident teams. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah. So, so the way it works, Susan, uh, Susan, I'm sorry, Jenny, is um, a non-resident team would pay a hundred dollars every time they use the field. The, 
<laughs> as opposed to a uh, uh, unaffiliated team, which is a hundred dollars for up to five uses. No, no, I saw that. So I'm just clarifying non-resident teams. I'm not seeing a distinction between. So if you look at one, two, three, four, five, they all have the word Guilford in there. So those are yes. all Guilfords, right? Those are all Guilford So six is the non-resident teams, and I'm just clarifying: Are we making distinction between? Nonprofit and for profit in that category. No, so it's just a flight. Oh, uh, just a just a, a fee yeah. Because no. two two uh, the past three years, not the last year, we had a baseball team in town that were using our the baseball facilities, which had a sixteen man roster and like eleven or twelve were non Guilford residents. Right. No, I hear that. that so my 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 question is more: Do we want to add a distinction between nonprofit and for-profit non-resident teams? Just recognizing the way we've done it up until this point, we're making a distinction between nonprofit and for-profit. So I'm just curious. I, I would think you would find if you if you took a survey of the non-resident teams, I would say it's a very high percentage that they're for-profit organizations, uh, such as AAU baseball, such as. Um, um, Basically, that, that would see that in that category. And then if you would have a, an adult soccer team that, say, used to play in Brantford, but they can no longer play in Brantford, and they're looking for fields for use, then if they, have, if they fail the criteria of a 60% residency, they would consider it as a non-resident team. So what I would recommend? Even, a, even though they are a non-profit for themselves, uh, the idea is, is that they, they would still fall under the category of being a non-resident team. Yeah, so what I would recommend is because that is a distinction and we are making a distinction and we are making a policy, we might as well just go ahead at this point Say it. and put it in there. Yeah. It just is an So is that a seventh, a seventh, seventh category? category? Yeah, breaking down non-resident uh, non teams. profit and non-resident okay, So we charge right. a different fee then too? Would you, or? Yeah, would you recommend a different fee for the for It the seems to me. Because yeah. you'd be following. Yeah. Or, or we could just not allow non-resident for-profit teams. We could just say that the fields aren't available. I mean, because quite we in all that. reality, absolutely. Because the pecking order we have here, you get to that level. I don't think any fields going to be available. <laughs> no, but what I heard John just say was that it was that the majority of the non-resident are for-profit teams. No, no, no. I, well, I mean, if, if, if you go into the AAU programs for youth organization, those are pretty much for-profit for, profit for cool. the. For AAU baseball? I don't have AAU. Oh, no, I'm not looking at, no, just what you had. Oh, yeah. Purpose. Yeah. Not your team, but. No, yeah. there are AAU programs that definitely are for profit, and they Correct. pay their coaches and so stuff. So then like we that. do have that. So then that, that. Why not follow suit with the rest of them? Right. Being we have well, that's that's they, the reason why we have this here for discussion. So. No, no, right. Exactly. How we many just teams would you say are non-resident, whether they're for profit or not for profit? I would I would probably say that I would know of maybe one or maybe two, maybe so in the adult soccer about league. Lot. Yeah, uh, the, the only ones right now that because the, the non-resident fee we've had for a while. Back when Ken was here, we had that subcommittee and we, we established a policy. And um, the only time it's been put into use is um, um, with Soccer Fest because there are a lot of non-resident teams. Mm -hmm. sure. Majority of my guests are non-resident. And when youth football had um, the the jamboree. jamboree, it had like 50 teams and five were Guilford. That the oh, they we charged them for not and it wasn't per team, it was per field. I think it was 100 dollars per field or something. Um, and yeah. the, the only other one was um, well, we have this Sting, Sting tournament. Sure, right? Sting, yeah. And yep. they they fall under the non-resident category. Now what they do is that they just run a one weekend softball tournament using uh, Bittner Park and well it was the the high school yeah, but, but that's, that's correct that, that's not going to be available to them. That's Ed Hobson, correct? Ed, Ed Hobson, who is a Guilford resident, so he is the managing director of the program, and Guilford is just one of the sites that they use for that weekend tournament. They also use Madison and sometimes they'll go into Westbrook uh, because of the number of teams that they have coming into. It's a very involved um, uh, tournament. Um, so, so according to the way those are run, do those meet this? I mean, because I'm hearing a distinction. I just want to be really clear. Um, There's some gray as to as, as to how we discuss these things. Um, an, exam an example would be the Sting is that he runs a for-profit organization, but he is a Guilford resident. He uh, his Sting teams, which are the host, have a, a significant number of Guilford players on each age category but they are bringing in other teams from out of state, out of town, to play in a localized tournament, like a jamboree. And, and so do we have anything in here that makes distinctions about, and I'm, I'm just not seeing it, but it might be there, that um, for tournaments, 
No, there was no distinction for, at, at, in, in, the, in the original discussion for tournaments like this. So, so, so and that to me is what I'm hearing a distinction is that we're thinking about do, doing operating under different policies for tournaments versus league use. Am I understanding? I, that that's a possibility. I think the yeah. other policy, which I should have included in here, the old policy does address tournaments. I didn't put that in with this one. This is new stuff we're trying to add to it. Sure. Um, the old one does have uh, some more language about tournaments if they're not resident teams in there. And that's yeah. where the $100 so fee is. That, like. that makes sense that that would be incorporated into this. Yes. It would have to be embedded in the same. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the advantages of these tournaments, such as the Sting or the, the football jamborees, they do bring a lot of um, visitors to our town. Um, they do go shopping down at yeah, the... Yeah, so there's no, oh, there's yeah, no I don't, question I don't, about that. Yeah, we just want to actually, John. because what ends up happening, we... But, Frankly, we just end up having way too many of these conversations over and over and over again, cool. nuances, and then we have to go back and look and what do we do this and this and so. Not have we, areas. so right, after we we've been here for a while and now we've seen that we keep having these conversations. And, and I agree. If we do have a policy with respect to what we've addressed here mm -hmm. with uh, tournaments and jamborees and Split jubilees. Let's put it in. Yeah. Okay. So it's all one place. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's, and yeah. and that's whatever fine tuning or changes have to be made, you know, obviously you're going to have to go back with Chip and everybody else right. and, and talk about the changes, but one policy. Right. Just get it done. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with Jenny because when you look at the non-resident teams, you get from unaffiliated, non-profit, then profit, and then all of a sudden you're kind of in this, well, what are they? They could be either way. Right. So why not be clear on whether they fall into which category? Yeah, Ed Hobson's program is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. He is a Guilford resident, mm -hmm. but half of the teams that are in <coughs> that, that Sting well, tournament are not Guilford teams. Right. 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 Correct. Correct. So we've been charging them the non-resident when we've been doing over the last three years at $100 per use. Yeah, as long as it's all because clearly laid out in one place. Of 60 of no. Well, that, that rule has gone back for years when we used to have the Guilford softball men's A, B, and C leagues. Mm -hmm. A lot of the teams came from out of town to play in that and the that that's what started the fee you know and, and who who has what rosters it's like what happened two years ago when i went down to a team that was playing on our facilities at guilford high school telling me they were it was a guilford team and i didn't see a single face and i've coached baseball in this town for 25 years that i knew you know they put names yeah. on the roster <laughs> but they weren't playing they weren't yeah so just to clarify, so what I'm seeing is, and this is a great start, so thanks for all the great work on this, and what I'm seeing is that things that need to be added in is we need to just make a distinction between for-profit and non-profit for non-resident usage. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make a distinction between tournament and league usage. Is there anything else? Does that sound right? No. That pretty much we captures just, it. We just need to add that other and clarify this one category. So what was the second one, uh, Jen? Is um, tournament, tournament versus oh, tournament. Tournament. Yeah, tournament versus league. Play. Yeah, and and the good example of that is a couple of years ago, being with the American Legion program, the state came to us and asked us to hold two first round games here in Guilford. So there would mm -hmm. be a, a request from the state that didn't part. Guilford participated in one of the two games, but the other two teams were out of town teams, and Guilford played the winner uh, uh, of that game. There's where a fee would have had to been paid, I would think, by the American Legion program, whether the state had to pay it or. The Guilford Legion program. And there was a time that we had uh, hosted the um, the regionals here for ASA tournaments, um, both at Chittenden Park and, and at the uh, uh, Bittner Park uh, for slow pitch softball. That was that goes back to the days when we used to have a full league, mm -hmm. but uh, we did have yeah, the facilities that uh, yeah. they were looking for. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, it's wonderful yeah. to be. The, I think it's we appreciate being the kind of town that yeah. is welcoming and able to host different oh, events, absolutely. and it's wonderful and that our just, fields are so loved and yes. appreciated. Yeah. 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 So we're able to keep come. them that way. So, so yes. Ralph, is it possible to approve the fees at least? Because uh, I know that Ed Green's been one. He's the one that's been waiting to find out what we're going to charge. Uh, the why are you asking me? I, I, I pose a question to the commission. Well, <laughs> well you're the chairman. Uh, you know, can we do that, or, or at least? Do you want to at least? What do you want to do? Is partially approve, uh, not the whole policy, but a particular portion of the policy? Yeah. We could, I'm sure we could have a. Uh, is, is, does he fall within the non resident team? He'd be the non profit team. In non profit Guilford team. So he's number four? That's already established. What you've already come up with. It would be that fee that's in that category, yeah, that, like the $200, 300 400 So Column two. You're yeah. looking for a, a, a one time approval for item number four. So that we could get back to Ed Green. 
Why? Yeah. Does he need to know before the, our next meeting? In well, he started, and, and tonight's his first night on the field, and we haven't told him what the fee is going to be yet. And oh. he needs to tell his parents about how, yeah. how, how much the fee is going to cost for his field so he can charge it to the parents. Well, can we, can we do it this way, that we, just, we, are, we don't approve the policy? Right, but instead we say we approve this fee for now, and mm -hmm. we're we're finalizing That's the fine. policy. Mm -hmm. And right, at the current it's time he could expect to pay. Right. With the happen? understanding that it may change, not for future. Okay, yeah. let's have a. Uh, we don't need to vote on it. We don't need to vote on it. No. Okay, so, so we don't need a motion. No. Um, now with that, Ralph and Commission members, if I can just ask this one, because this was not part of the field use. Fee was the boot camp down at Jacobs Beach, and on that one, we've charged. The fee has been 15 percent, which goes in line with what we charge for the um, for-profit <coughs> camps, that, like the Ray Reed soccer camp and the yeah. Emerson well, camp. Well, we did the yoga on the beach and the yeah, so yeah the yoga on the beach was a Parks and Rec program, so it came under us. Right, but you know. it wasn't the first year. Oh, no, the, boot the, first year. the boot camp. This is a woman who did it on her own. Yeah, there right. was I feel like we did. end up overcharging her last year or something, mm -hmm. didn't? Was, was that isn't? Didn't we well, end up finding we 15, out that something? I think something we did the fifteen percent. Last year she wasn't here. I think she did, she didn't do it last year. She's coming back to us this year. Okay. And I think she's starting again next week or soon. Anyway, she wants to know what the fee is going to be. So it was a woman that did it two years in a row. And it's the year, same one. What did we charge her in the past? Yeah. Fifteen percent of what she made. Right. I think the per, distinction per, we were making with this gross? these were team sports yeah. here. That What's we're the fifteen percent of whatever she took in of whatever her registration fees were? Everything. And she registers through us, correct? No. No, she's on her own. Have so we applied we that to other people? Rec we need to get all this in writing. Have we got? Have we applied that to someone else? Just to the um, soccer camps, which technically are, are they're under our program. We charge them because they're for-profit organizations. We charge them fifteen yeah. percent. So what is the difference between what she's doing and a guy who's running a soccer camp doing? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think it's the same. So then she gets charged the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So 15 percent. No. Well, whatever. Yeah, that's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. 15 percent. And that's on that. These on. What did the, I, what I think the thing I remember are? the way it played out, and I, I'm trying to remember because we <laughs> these are still all out there, and I'm glad we're getting it all on paper. But it seems to me when we ran the numbers or when we were t talking about this last time that this actually turned out to not be 15 percent. Mm. Right. This is less. Yeah. This is less. That's correct. Yeah, that's what I find problematic yeah. because when we because I mean and you know I just wouldn't want it to be. That we have, you know, equitable right. distinctions across all of them. So for me, the fact that we're charging her more than what we have here, that's where I'm finding myself stuck. But again, it is what we charge for the soccer camps. You know, I mean, if it was a baseball camp, it would be the same thing. Um, so then do we adjust the fee that we normally do? Well, that's the, the, the difference is when you talk percentages and one-time fees. That's, that, that's I mean, where the I problem think, is. I mean, I think the volume when you're talking soccer camp versus a boot camp, I mean, my hunch is her boot camp is probably much smaller in numbers oh, yeah, than yeah, a soccer sure. camp, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and so if, if the reason we're doing it is because of the cost of upkeep, then it wouldn't really make sense, you know, when we're talking about boot camp on the beach versus soccer camps. And so that's where I'm finding myself just feeling stuck, that I, it doesn't feel equitable to me. And so that's where I'm thinking, oh, we need to give a little more thought to this. So I would prefer us to, to reduce the fee to, I think it's Lisa Peterson I saw in here, oh. that, that we reduce her fee to be m more equitable. And then we also include, it seems to me what we need to do is include, so we have tournament distinction, we have league distinction. It sounds like we need to add camps yeah. in here. Well, uh, yeah, unless you are on the number of participants in the activity would be the percentage. But the percentage I mean, is it, it changes. What the amount will change by the number of people that enroll in the class. And I remember much. we got we got hooked up on this one before because we were <coughs> looking at the volume in the soccer camps, and then we started realizing what that would end up, how that would end up playing mm -hmm. out in terms of the impact on the person who was running the camp. So, I. I'm asking us to give pause to figure to that 15% charge for a program that's smaller and include camps in the field policy 
with adult league the field use policy tournament. right so we have tournament leagues league. camps it seems like we need a camp category and then we do need to figure out what to do about this I, I see it more akin to what, what is something else we've done on the beach like I mean when we rent when we rent it out the pavilions, for well, the example. Pavilion, this, the this, pavilions this, are more costly. Yeah. I was just going to say, this this fee structure that we have for the teams is more compatible with what we have with regard to renting the pavilion down at Jacobs Beach. As based upon the number of people, it requires X number of dollars. Uh, if you go from what, 1 to 25, it's X number of dollars. If it's 25 to 50, it's X plus Y dollars. So the, the higher the number of people that are there, the, the, the greater the fee. I, I was under the impression that the 15% was more in geared with park and rec policy with regard to the use of the other facilities that we have here. Th so that, um, am I wrong in that regard? Um, that, uh, say like somebody from out of town wants to, to rent one of the rooms that we charge. We do charge a non-resident fee for there's that, a, but it's not fee. based upon a percentage no, of a their... Fee. It's a flat fee. It's a flat fee. Right. So we would be, you would almost want to be changing everything from a percentage option to just a flat fee option. There. Well, I think there's a clear distinction between when we're talking about building usage versus mm -hmm. field usage, and that's the distinction I'm trying to call out. I want, I want us to, to kind of tighten up and make sure that we have wrapped around in our heads why we're making, why we're allocating these charges as we are. Are you worrying that um, that the fifteen percent was onerous for this particular pr uh, program, the boot camp? Because it's she's, she's sound, come I back. mean, I know nothing she's about. She's come back, so um, yeah. But I just, to me, I'm just, I'm. When you look at it in terms of a policy, it's not the same. I'm so purely looking at it from the right. Okay. We're in the middle of doing this, and since we're trying to, we're throwing a charge out now. I'm saying, <coughs> well, then let's not do that because we know fifteen percent is too too high compared to this. And so well, I'm so would we just instead of with a nonprofit Guilford teams, a nonprofit Guilford organization, yeah, organizations, yeah, or, or you know, so it's in a that for case, profit. It is for it's a for-profit. Uh, for for I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in the middle category. For and profit. how many sessions is she going to have? Um, uh, I don't know. It's probably. I think it's probably more than eleven, because I think it's all summer long, a couple times a week. Oh. I don't know offhand because we haven't reserved it yet for the, the beach. So, so four hundred um, would be less than the fifteen percent. Oh yeah. Oh, so that to me well, sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Because well, you're using I was the same criteria that right. you would for the exactly. same category, whether it's. it's it's a field. It just happens to be a beach. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's still the so same. So if we use that policy, then it'd be for she'd be falling at the for profit. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and I feel very comfortable with that. So are we should be a team we, slash organization. Right. Are these the only two organizations that we actually put a percentage on? Was just the the, the soccer, soccer camp ones right now, and yeah. this bo other boot camp. Yeah, and, but they're also parks and rec programs, so it's a little different. It's different. They, they're run through us. Okay. And we, I guess, we agree this. Will they're they're sort work. of number one and number um, and number five mixed up in a way. They're for profit, but yeah. they're one of ours. So right. we get an exemption because they're part of our program. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they're profit. Mm -hmm. No, I don't disagree with you, Jenny. If you mm -hmm. want to f follow consistency on that, then the percentage, because that's how I, we got it. John, I think we've reached yes, a, yeah. a conclusion here. I don't need to interrupt you. Yeah. We're just as simply going to change for profit Guilford teams to or organizations or organizations or organizations and I think we've covered the ground right yeah okay yeah, seems fair. and then we'll just add in tournament please not casting camps concrete if we find days. out we have to revisit we'll do it we've done it more than once so we can do it <laughs> yeah. more <laughs> more <laughs> let's get it right so. I was going to say it's way more than one <laughs> yeah way more than one let's yeah. get it down <laughs> new stuff comes up <laughs> yeah and that's fair yeah, and, and, the, and, and in defense of uh, this particular commission uh, none of this stuff was, uh, you know how big I've been on policies and procedures simply because of this, because yeah. every time something came up, it was, let, let's have another 15, 20 minute discussion. Well, and to your point, do. Rick, we're, it's con we're growing. Okay. So right. we're, we're getting closer. community growing we programs. We have so to evolve and grow as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Speaking of uh, things from the past, I know. can we move on? So you're yes. approving the fees? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just for these one time, no, these one time charges. Wanted John to redo the one time the charge policies? with the intent that it, it could change. Because Rick had asked you to approve the fees yeah. for now. Well, I thought we, thought we said, said we would just going to go back and give her the fee and not do any approval. Right. 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 We're not approving the policies. In other words, we're not approving the policies where because they're incomplete. 
these charges right. separate. But for now, for the, the two groups who need to know a fee, I'm going to go with what the right. right. exactly. approved exactly. or what we've yeah. discussed with here. The intent, yeah. uh, with the stipulation that it could change. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. How's that for muddy water? <laughs> Six H dog park dog leash law. Now I'm assuming that uh, I can speak to it, Ralph. Okay. Um, just to remind everybody that over four years ago we had um, uh, some dog owners who were interested in um, talking with us about establishing a dog park and um, three people from that group, a loosely organized group, are here with us tonight just to acknowledge that you're here. And we began the conversation last uh, month when you um, were away, Ralph, about the, the idea that the Park and Recreation Department and Commission would want to be supportive of, of having a dog park because it is part of recreation and that's our mission. Uh -huh. um, and so uh, Joanne and I w began, and, and not necessarily on park and recreation property that we're responsible for, but possibly town property, uh -huh. but that if we as a department and a commission were supportive, that that, that that would help the group to move forward and find an appropriate site. Uh, so Joanne Basile, and seated in the middle um, in the red vest, um, went to town in the first place that we were Back looking then, at. Because I remember that. Right. Yeah. Well, she went to town. Now, the, the, after we met with them four years ago, things, nothing really moved forward right. uh, at that point. But they're reorganizing now, and they've come back to us. Um, Joanne went to town hall and spoke with Kevin McGee because one site that was looking very good for um, an open area where dogs could run free under the supervision of their owners, of course, um, might be the East River Preserve. And what she learned from Kevin McGee was that there were some federal regulations about the, the space because of the money having gotten from them um, that wouldn't allow for that. Right. I'm not so sure that that maybe was interpreted correctly. Is that a nice way of saying it? <laughs> um, but at any rate, uh, just to pursue a spot, Joanne and I did walk to three places, and one of them was near the skate park in Bittner. Mm -hmm. the, those trails that are down there, are they our property, Rick, or do they belong to something, someone else? Bittner, we, we have 100, uh, 150, 160 acres there. So as we walk around the skate park and down the hill to the to the river, that's that's that's, that's park, park and recreation. Park, yeah. Okay. Very good. That's good news. Um, we also walked um, over by Hubbard Road where the buses park. There's a part parcel that's owned by the town uh, that's adjacent to the buses where the buses park. But it, some of it's wetlands, and, and we're not clear, and Joanne is going to pursue that with Mr. Portley, how, how large an area it is. Mm -hmm. And finally, we went to Peddlers, and you'll remember that Peddlers Park on Peddlers, off Peddlers Road was one of the areas that was discussed in the past. Um, and actually, that, that <coughs> area, you can't really call it a park. It's part of our, but it, it's a mess, frankly. Mm -hmm. It looks like people have, I don't know, run bulldozer games down there or something. There are piles mm -hmm. of rocks. There are, you know, um, Giant piles of dirt that have. That's all from the high school football field. Yeah. When, it, when it was converted to turf, all that was well, dumped. Said, no, no, it's not just that what's dumped. It also looks like there have been bulldozers down there moving earth around, not recently. At any rate, there isn't, a, nobody else is using that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it could be with a fair amount of work and some help from um, uh, um, Public Works, possibly, and with some help from Mr. Portley to help design it, it might be a logical place for. Um, a large enclosed dog area so that, uh, and there are some fencing that can be done, Joanne explains to me, with, by attaching the fence to trees so that it's a very natural looking area. So I'm just, I just want to bring you up to date with where, you know, what, what's going on with the, the dog park supporters um, and well, how we might be helpful. And we talked about this in Land Acquisition Commission as well. Okay. Um, Peddlers is not the nutmeg. No, nut plains. Nut plains. Nut, the nut plains has some area as well, as I understand, that might possibly be used. And it's, it's down past 
you know, down below is where the chestnut tree farm is down there. Yeah, that there's a, a possibility the for down there. Yeah. And then, um, so maybe that's, uh, and I don't garden. know. Um, used to be, yeah. Just because that's a big ball field area, right? It's not the big yeah. Well, there's, a, there's an area, though. The road was down uh, below. Yeah. yeah. It, it used to, it, it was formerly used for um, community gardens, gardens. right down oh. and now it's a chestnut uh, nursery uh, hundred and some trees down in there it's all fenced in so it's a great place it's fenced around yeah. to keep the deer out but yeah. there's always little chestnut saplings down there I wouldn't want dogs all over walking on <laughs> well, is there other land and there's some area along the parking lot down there is that where there was an area that was purchased for an elementary school right right but so it's not going to be used for an elementary. So that's not another thing that you yeah. should look at. Um, I mean, I don't. Uh, I haven't been in the place. So I'm not playing. That's what they were talking about. They might not play. So it's all by that park and park yeah, park over there. And just to clarify, <laughs> um, just having the benefit of been being part of the conversation in um, the Land Acquisition Commission. Um, it's not necessarily about federal re regulations. I mean, I'm sure there are some, um, and it's about um, just conserving the the natural, natural habitat, resources. right, of the animals that are there, and by having dogs there for the East River Preserve, it actually can disturb some of the natural habitat mm -hmm. and the balance. And so, that was the concern. I know not only from Kevin, but also from just other members on the Land Acquisition Commission. It was coming from a place of wanting to. Um, be true to the intention to, of conservation. So, and I think it's we're excited that we have other possible yeah. sites that would work. Because obviously, this seems like a very wise thing. I know we were excited about it right. four years ago. Well, I can't think. <laughs> well, we approved the whole process. Yes, yeah, it's great right to have it resurfaced. We said, so we, said we would be supportive four years ago. But yeah. you need to come to us and tell us who else is going to be involved in what you want to do. I don't see any other competition for Peddler's Park, frankly. Well, the and the land, pile is the going. Land trust has concerns because they have property nearby, right? Well, but it would so be we'll fenced in, though, so we wouldn't be on land trust property. Goes is right past that. Yeah, so long as so all I know is the land trust have concerns about it because they have property nearby. So I think it was more in terms of knowing where, they, they, where they the where the parking lot occurred. Would be adjacent to it. Not a there is a parking lot. Yeah, yeah, there's a parking, there is a parking lot, lot for but the land, the trails as well. It does need to be enlarged. Right. It's, it's, right. it's quite so small. That, I think that was that was the concern. Right. Right. So long it's been so dead, and then okay. you know, right. it's not going to be disturbing. So I think Rick has some um, things he could add to this. Yeah, great. So, Feathers Park, in our five-year plan over a number of years, we we always put in somewhere as a placeholder to reclaim Feathers Park to do something there. We never identified what. But one of the reasons we brought all that soil down there from the high school project is that there was a form of landfill. So if we ever wanted to make a, some of you might remember before I was here, but I guess there was a park down there, a picnic area with a little softball field or something. Right. So we looked at reclaiming that, but it is a form of landfill. And so you can't bulldoze because underneath that there's Disturbing. washing machines and cars and dryers and metal <laughs> stuff. And so, but, but we brought all that fill from the high school down there thinking if we ever want to reclaim it, you can't grade what's here. We got to build up on oh, top. Build of on it. top of it. Right. So we got all that fill. We got topsoil there, and the idea is that eventually we can make that into <coughs> something. And so, you know, maybe a dog park is a good idea for that that area. Um, I was at a meeting. I don't remember all the meetings I've had in the last two weeks, but this one was uh, <laughs> another one in the selectman's office with uh, um, police chief, uh, environmental planner. Uh, some people from the East River Preserve Committee, and th in that meeting they were identifying how they don't want dogs running loose up at East River Preserve to try to get the dog animal control officers out there patrol that, um, and trying to reinforce the leash law that uh, there is a law, but a lot of people, you know, have their dogs off leash, especially up there. Um, and I know at Bittner Park and other places. So we've been asked to put it on our website, and the town's put on their website a reminder: the law is dogs must be under on a leash and under control, and so on. But at that meeting, I mentioned there is some interest in a dog park, so the fact that people need a place for their dogs to be able to run, they can't let them off the leash. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like the kids use a skateboard downtown. They say, hey, wait, there's a skate park now. You can go there. There's a place you can go. Somebody's letting their dog loose at East River Preserve. Somebody can say, hey, you know what? There's a dog park. It's at wherever, Peddler's there's Park or whatever. There. Bring the dog over there. So I, I think there might be support okay. for, for doing it. The peddler site would be good in two ways. One, it could be fenced, it can be fenced in, but it's large enough to have dogs be able to feel like they can run, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, 
if it's an enclosed but large space. I, I think I've read that ideally an, an acre is about the size, you know, ideally for a dog park. Uh, you know, someplace it, yeah. I mean, it's pretty big. You know, like a soccer field is an acre and a half, so it's a large area. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, you don't want a small area because then you end up dogs that get congested, then there's you run more risk of having, you know, like misbehaved dogs, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that was interesting about peddlers is Barbara and I walked around. It has all of these because of stuff that's been pushed up against it. Berms. And so on. Right, it has all these berms. Oh, yeah. And it just to me looks like a great recreational area. Just keep those there, mm -hmm. you know, kind of fence around the outside. Mm -hmm. And then dogs could run up on top of the pile and play mm -hmm. King of the Mount and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then we could also make a smaller area within the larger area for small dogs mm -hmm. just because they get run over by big ones, mm, yeah. body slamming and so on. Well, actually, that, yeah, I mean, that would make it a lot easier if we just left it as it is and just put a fence around it. Well, actually, <laughs> I mean, we, we, need, we would need some help. Um, there's a lot, there was a lot of water that was there, so I presume it, not only it was because we had a lot of rain, but that it, the way the Pearls, yeah. way in which it's done. So perhaps some of the the big pile yeah. of topsoil could be used. I mean, I don't know about this stuff. I can't even go. I can't even do my own landscaping in my yard. So we would need somebody who knows about these kinds of things. But if we could address the uh, low lying areas where the water collects, um, then I like I like the different levels. I mean, I just mm -hmm. think it's. Terrific. So maybe the, well, the, the next step is to go back and further investigate. Maybe the next step would be to go back to the town and investigate more of the specifics if you were to look at that park in particular, what the town would need to do. Um, well, it would be us so if, if it's our park. I mean, not that we would do it, but um, <laughs> I think maybe a, a, to follow on Sue's point, that maybe the next step would be to ask um, our town engineer, yeah, Jim Portley, to, to go, or go over there with you. Done, like, it sounds like regrading right. would be something, yeah. mm -hmm. um, fencing, where to attach it. You need to know where the borders are as mm -hmm. far as the particulars right. of right. the actual land itself. So maybe to go back and concentrate with the town on this particular Jim, so I, I talked to Jim uh, we have a week, right, on this because of the land that's over by um, Hubbard. And, um, and he mentioned peddlers. He said to me, he said, you know, go over to peddlers. And I had been to peddlers several times, and I never saw anything because I never walked down the path. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when I walked down the path, I understood why it was such a... What about a, uh, parking? Parking is an issue. There's not it's enough. There's probably enough for five cars. No, you can get more than that. You could probably fit... This is Catherine Kiernan, and this I'm is <laughs> Patty Bob. I would say... You'll get whatever planning and zoning says you can have. Yeah. 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 You think you can have. <laughs> Easily if they just parked in ten cars. But you that's not enough. can go there now? I yeah. only thought there was five or six. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. The Access, emergency yeah. at the whole bit. Yeah, so, that, so that's right. going to be concerned. And then also we just... The safety of that, I mean, just knowing it. And the maintenance of the area. Landfill, but right. If you're going to put in fencing, like that, the cleanup of the area. I mean, we've had all this discussion. Yeah, I think there needs to be an environmental kind of study probably. You know, my concern as chairman would be, again, what I said before with respect to the potential of a building. I have no problem with a dog park. I'm a dog owner. I love dogs. I, I don't see no problem. But from a town perspective, I have to look at what I would have to do, what this commission would have to do budget-wise and what the expectations would be of this department to maintain, keep clean, whatever, mow, whatever it is, mm -hmm. because obviously you need people and staff to do that. And just to there is alternative to that. There's um, dog parks I looked into where they have a key fob system, yeah. and you have to pay um, a small fee. Um, you set up a card access system, um, and then you swipe your, your fob to get in. You pay as an annual $35 to the town or whatever, and everyone who wants to go in there pays it for the year. You could charge visitors um, a weekly fee. Oh, yeah. Kind of I'm like a beach yeah. That's a way to, it's kind of like But a that best. still means yeah. if yeah. I'm going to be charged with maintenance and right. so book picking, then I have yeah. to hire somebody to do that. I also have no problem well, fundraising for the fence. And right. We, you know, there are certain things that we would take on as a responsibility. Okay. Can I so to, can to allay any, any possible concerns from the land trust and the, the adjacent trails, yeah. Uh, the proposed dog park would be completely enclosed. Correct. It would have to be. Yeah. Yeah. 
So to move it forward, go. Yeah. we need to do some kind of study. We need to, I mean, what, where do we go <coughs> for this? Is it, I mean, is it just talking with? I mean, if they're just looking for us for approval to, uh, uh, investigate. to, to investigate the use of existing park and rec properties for a dog park, I have no problem saying, yes, let's go do that. But, you know, dealing with the town engineer, dealing with the insurance, the liabilities of, of such and such an event, the, it's going to be incumbent upon them to do it, not, not this commission. Yeah. Well, I, I would suggest that, Ralph. And, and if, you, if you want to set up an appointment, probably with Kevin McGee and Fire Mountain Planner, and maybe Jim Porley and myself, that we can walk down there, but let's look at, at what the... Kevin would know maybe the boundaries of where the land trust area is if we're far enough away from that might ease any of those concerns and take a look and see what, you know, visualize what can we do here. Because the, the, the top soil standard, we do still use that. You know, we use that for our parks and our fields. And it, that was the intent. When we put it there from the high school project for 10 years, we would never have to buy topsoil because we have it. Mm -hmm. um, but if we needed to use some of that to spread around a little bit or, or just some of that fill, just to fill in those holes. We don't touch the top, so we kind of separate that out so we can still use it for our other uses and just get around the fence to get it. So I think it's, like I said, it, it, we've had a five-year plan to do something with that. We never identified what. We just kind of, it's been a placeholder. Maybe we got to, we just maybe identified something to look at for so, that area down there. Right. Could, can I, can I ask you. a question as far as liability? This sounds silly maybe, but does liability cover animals as well as people and what would the liability would it be a separate liability that we would need to add yeah i think um, pam would have to answer that or you know or the insurance i mean that could be a actually yeah. sue you know there are other t other towns have dealt with what this. the rule generally has been but you need to have your general counsel look at right. that issue Absolutely. which is what we had right. said last time but in general what the rule is is that your existing liability uh policies care uh, cover things like that and dog bites and dog fights are all the responsibilities of the owner's town is not responsible for them. And that's what happens in all the other... Like Clinton has a small dog park. Right. I mean, yeah. Bradford so has we two. We happened within the confines of the area that is under our umbrella. I'm sorry? That it, if something happened under, you know, within that property that we, you know, took over for this use, that it would be between the owners of the animals. Yes, if it was a, a, a dog bite, and that goes between the owners. Oh, but the liability, for instance, so if somebody falls, well, the, just the like card swiping know. idea would be to responsibility of, of you being there and taking, you know, obviously you have to take responsibility too for your dog's actions, but it, it, it makes you more accountable because you're logged into being there. Right. And okay. you were there, and so was yeah. so something if, else, if I guess. This was as simple as saying, Okay, go do peddlers. You know, I, I think this commission, I'm not speaking for everybody, would, would probably have little, if any, problem approving something like that. But you've got interaction with the town engineering department. You've got to have an interaction with the public works, the with town the, attorney. Well, the town attorney, and uh, so I don't know what you're looking for us well, for our, our I think next what step. The next step is that that um, that group should organize a, yeah. a walk mm -hmm. with Jim Portley right. and Kevin McGee and Rick at Peddlers to see to what would be needed, available. and then come back and tell right. us what you've okay. discovered. And we actually had talked with the town attorney at that point about uh, about the liability. And, yeah, I think and the only issue that we ran into was liability and uh, no property available. Yeah, and I think, I think we were, I think we were actually fine in terms of liability. Also. We asked about it, and I think we felt comfortable, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, right. which is why mm -hmm. we said, yeah. let's continue. Right. This so then maybe right. next yeah. month I mean, I'd be that. surprised if Guilford had policies that were different than the other, yeah. you we know, 25 towns in the yeah, state that have dog parks. But yeah. something brought it to a stop the last time. Do you well, happen to know where well, it was? Well, yeah, actually, we went before the... Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen. I keep wanting to say Alderman. Wrong town. Mm. <laughs> and um, it was just before an election. It was just okay. before. You're right, Jeff. Right. So it was. <laughs> you whispered in my year election. Jeff. Not that that has any fact with all of Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, and thanks. All right. Yeah, well, can I just ask one other thing? We had talked about also the possibility of of um, having off-leash areas in the wooded areas designated for certain times of the day, certain days of the week. And we were looking at Bittner. That's a town charter change. Yeah. That's if I remember reading the charter correctly. Yeah. That's what? a town, town charter change. Has, yeah. They have to be leashed unless they're on their own. That's property. not on the road. That, that's a town charter change. 
Uh, Charter. But they don't, it's I a mean, charter change. Yeah, you, you, have you read the... Uh, have yeah, you, no, I mean, I have yeah. it. I didn't know it was a charter change. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. a... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's strictly That's permitted. Off-leash is strictly permitted. Forbid, That's strictly forbidden. forbidden. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dogs can be off... It's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that all dogs need to be leashed unless they are on their own property. They can be unleashed as long as they stay within the perimeter of the, or their property lines. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's well, uh, town charter. And that is a town charter. Right, but yeah. there can be, um, you know, changes to the town charter. Absolutely. Well, said right. that there has to be a change. Right. I, but I, let's not, but go, too many let's not go too many places at once. Right. Let's pursue this at mm -hmm. this point, okay. but keeping in mind that if, if it were possible to change the, the law in the town, that one of the ways to let dogs off leash would be to have certain areas under control for certain hours of a day. Right. Right which they do in New York City in Central Park. They have, you can take your dog and take it off leash in Central Park for certain, like, hours of the morning. Five okay. to nine. They have yeah. to be under control of the owner, but they don't have to be leashed. Right. Those and are two separate issues. Yeah. Two separate issues, so leash. let's, right. Let's it's 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. <laughs> 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 Them in the park <laughs> rapists, you know, the only ones that can run loose at the park. So thanks for coming and giving us Oh, well, thank you. And come back to us with what you Yeah, just, just let us know and keep us informed if you want to get back at the agenda. And if you, you found something successful happened, just let us know. Okay. Well, Rick, I'm going to be in touch. In yeah, touch yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. With, uh, Jim and, uh, and Kevin, take a look. Thank you all so much. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We get to go. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got a feeling after the next item we might be here for a Just while. Just yeah. one thing you should know on the town website under commissions, the, this commission is it says their meetings are scheduled at seven o'clock. It does they use that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when we got yeah. here, we were mortified that we were downstairs. At 6 30. Well, we knew you were coming, so we wanted to so, so I'm just sorry. change the agenda. No, no, I'm just thinking that to the extent that anybody else wants to show up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Make it it's, it's, it's a good yeah. point. Yeah. You're right on time for your agenda. So item, that was perfect. Thank you. 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 Thank I don't know why. I, I, I'm sorry. What? I said, did the new one just go out to press? It did. Yeah. Till through. Yeah, we're 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 stuck till the end of summer because we just did a spring summer brochure. Wait, we, we could just put a note on our website. Just yeah, like it could be on the website, our website, and um, the town with the uh, TV screen downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Six I request for alcohol at town parks. I see. We, we have two requests. Which First we've one. Read. Yep, and we're all familiar with. Uh, just, just one question. Uh, I read this document. I don't know where it came from. Forest and Park, in addition to the the town charter. And I don't remember seeing this. Is this something that was on a it public was last list? time? This last was the company oh. that wants to make that special group. Oh, they brought that here. Yeah, but uh, Rick attached. Yeah, I attached that. That's that's that was so my cool. question too. Which, which has a leash law in there, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. You should have highlighted that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that, that, that's why I knew it. But th this, is how, this is not how this is phrased in the town charter. What? Item A. a. Well, what is this, then? I don't know. This, this is, is not from the town charter. This is Chapter Parks and Public Places. Yeah, but it's not the town charter. The charter is... These are the ordinances, Ralph. These are the yeah. ordinances, well, not the charter. Well, I'm saying this is it. not how it's phrased in the town charter. It isn't. Uh, what does no. the charter say, Ralph? What, if the, if the fi well, first, let me ask a question while we're on tape. Is it true that there has been some kind of tacit approval to do this uh, at another level uh, approved already? Because the pecking order, the way I understand the town charter says, we are the... Um, what was the exact term? Governing, governing body. Yeah. The governing body can approve the request, which then has to go to the Board of Selectmen, which then has to be sure that it's met with the state ordinance, and I forgot the number. So that's the pecking order the way I reminded it. But I've been, the same person that told me that the science building was going to become park and rec has told me 
that they've been told that uh, this is a mere formality that it's been approved by the Board of Which Selection. the Forest and Park? The, uh, that or the, the Chamber request, of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce request has been oh. informally approved. Okay, yeah, I don't think it's been on the agenda yet. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. It requires so the concurrence of two bodies, Ralph. The Board of uh, Parks and Recreation Commission and the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, my only concern was that if somebody's been told by the superseding body, mm -hmm. according to the pecking order, the point is that moved. they approved it, what's the point of us making it's, a vote? It's a moot point. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to look at the minutes of the Board well, of Selectmen. Well, rumors fly. Well, it's rumors fly. Rumor. So let's approach it as if nothing has happened. Okay. Okay. Right. Do I hear any, uh, let's open up the discussion. So, uh, so I am curious because this is different than what we had heard before, which is that we there was that we have previously not allowed any alcoholic Ever. beverages. We've never made an exception. Never, exactly. This is saying that we can make exceptions. And I'm hearing you, Ralph, say that you believe the charter actually the language of the charter is different than the ordinance. The way I read it, there's a pecking order. We would have to approve it first. Oh, 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 but you are saying that, in fact, yes, that it can be. It, it can be yeah, because one of the other questions okay. I had, right. then, one of the other Just questions sure I had was, no and list. I think I got the answer, I forgot who gave me the answer, I know Barbara had responded to it. I said, I, well, I asked Rick to contact the town attorney because I said if there's a policy and a procedure that's been previously established with respect to anything right. with Park and Rec, do we as a commission have to follow any kind of specific procedure or change policy before we change that policy? And the answer I got was no. Am I so, correct? So the understanding, we have, never, we have never said yes in the past. However, according to the ordinance, we can waive that and grant permission. Correct. And the, reason, the rationale that passed for not having approved it was... Doing precedent. precedent. So strictly that. Kids. And uh, and and well, uh, I well, think pretty much the policies no. itself in the charter, where it prohibits this, prohibits that, without the without the governing body approving it. Well, no one one of the reasons why uh, it was not allowed in the past was because it's prohibited. And and they're right, it is prohibited unless we do something about that. Correct. Yeah. It's not really. Yeah. And, and then there was another reason because I've concerns over having a pit fire which possibly might be unsupervised. Yeah, well, that's, that's not how the town charter is. Oh, I town charter doesn't talking. even talk about a pit fire. Well, it does actually. That actually, right uh, here. That, that's referring no to, no um, Kathy was good enough to do some research and she looked back through 13 years of minutes and found only one request. And that right. request came from a committee <coughs> wanting to hold a uh, New England clam bake at Jacob's Beach and serve beer and wine. And at that time, the commission then denied the request because of the precedent it would set because alcohol is prohibited on town properties and because of concerns over having a fire pit which would possibly be unsupervised. That was that particular request. Right. So now we have two requests before us that basically are asking the same thing as far as serving alcohol at two different events. So we can either... <coughs> My, my question is, if we make a decision, what is the next step? It goes to Board of Selectmen. Do they have the ability to change our vote? And yeah. they, they probably vote do. They, they, probably, they probably can override okay. our vote. Yeah, so the way I read it, it would be a recommendation. It would give permission, tacit our approval our of this commission, so but the overriding vote would be the Board, Board of Selectmen Select and... They and have the last word. The selectmen have the last the way word. I read it. Yeah. I this one says they and. They supersede our, yeah. our jurisdiction. This is an and statement in here. That's on page four. Page four, yeah. It's an and statement page that both an have to statement. agree to it. Right. I, and I don't, I mean, I'm just stating it. That in this particular one, the forest from Hawk one? Else. Yep. Page so four and five. Two. I mean, um, the page two suggests that the board of selectmen acts first. And if they act affirmatively, then it goes to us. It says, have alcoholic beverages unless written permission is granted by Parks and Recreation and the Board of Selectmen in accordance with town. You're on page four now, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, ju and just to clarify, the, the Connecticut Forest and Park Association didn't provide this. I, I want, I got made copies right. of these so you would have them so you know mm -hmm. what the rule of ordinance was. It didn't come from them. I, I thought that was the case, although I wasn't sure. It just had but to be then when I saw so. the two dog statute references, I figured you might have attached okay. it from us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How are we going to approach this? So it seems like what our, Each one. our charge Up is down. to. What do you think? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like our charge is at this point knowing that the next step is that it's going to Board of Selectmen for review or final vote. Well, it is that we have to decide whether it's going to be agreed or not agreed. So it would be a motion. You made a very, very interesting point. Let's, let's read this. Can I just read this and determine what we have to do right now? I read this. <coughs> To consume or have any alcoholic liquors as defined in Section 30-1 of the Connecticut Genuine Statutes of any kind in an open container in his or her possession except when the governing agency, which we are, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yes. We, yes. except when the governing, in its discretion after receiving the approval of the Board of Selectmen waives the provisions of this subsection by issuing a permit to that effect to any association, club, society, or similar organization which applies. So we have the last say. It, it, I don't know that we have the last say. I mean, we, we would basically, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think what we have to, I, um, the way I'm reading this, please correct me if I'm reading this wrong. Of course, I, well, if you it sounds like the, if the selectsmen tell me they don't have a problem with it, then we right. have to say have yes or no. Then we have to act on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we can read that right? Well, that's my yeah. We would be considered the governing agency because it falls under our jurisdiction. No, it's our a, by definition of the charter, we are the governing agency. Right. I'm just defining the, the rules. Right. The Section mm -hmm. A uh, defines us as the uh, governing agency. So what does that leave us? Do we then pass these requests along to the Board of Selectmen and have them and have them vote? They vote and then we say whether we want that to happen. Yeah. But this delays again. We've had this for a whole month. And well, does well they meet twice a month. I don't think I don't know how you can interpret that or read it any differently. I mean that's that's right. Do we know if this has been brought before the Board of Selectmen? I All I can is. tell you is the hearsay piece of inf hearsay piece of information that I got was that Joe said, uh, "Bring it to park and wreck. It's, it's not going to be an issue." Oh, that's hearsay. Well, you can't go by hearsay. Yeah, hearsay you have to go by anecdotes. What we know. There's no meeting the being held. I don't know. Do you happen to know if either either one of these uh, uh, organizations has gone to the town? And I think there was a letter. I think the chamber has written a letter to the board of selectmen, but I don't think they had a meeting on it. I don't well, believe it's been on so agenda. So they're no meeting on April 21st, so it's before our May meeting. Right. I suggest we then quote this, send a letter, send these requests to them, and ask them to rule. Because our reading of this ordinance says that they rule and then it comes back to us. And we need it before our May meeting so that we can make a decision. And, and the first event is not until June 8th. Right. right. And the chamber right. has didn't to be done specify before the May date. They yeah. just said during the summer. Sometime Friday or Saturday, Saturday yeah. or Friday yeah. or something like that. I think you're right. I think that's the way it, it reads. But how, boy, I mean, don't you think they want to know what the Parks and Rec a commission's opinion is on this before they make a ruling on it and then send it back to us? Well, could we take a straw vote? Well, because uh, the other one almost contradicts it. The other one says that uh, the commission has to be granted by the Parks and Rec Department or Commission and Board of Selectmen in accordance with town ordinance. So what if one says yes and the other one says no? Well, that's why I question this whole thing, where it came from. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the whole point of it. That is, uh, to me, that is the whole point of it. Then you have two entities actually saying they agree to it. So it's an and statement. There is, to me, I'm reading it as there is a sequential order. It goes to the board segment we have final say. And it requires that there's a but there is consensus. Mm. That's my read now, on it. If you had well, a computer in here and I brought up the town charter, I tried it would, to look for it. Uh, the way, yeah, it was section two, whatever it else it is. You got to look up, uh, uh, but I did read it when I was down in Florida. I interpret the town charter to say 
we have to approve it before the selectmen do. So that's um, why I said, where did so this come from? Maybe, maybe what we need to do is to get a ruling from town legal as to exactly what the procedure is. Who goes first? Because it sounds like there's a discrepancy depending on where you look. Um, you're mm -hmm. saying that what you read seems to be the opposite of what these two items but listed to as. So maybe first we're putting the cart before the horse. We need to find out exactly what the particular protocol is. And then at that point, then we know whether and we decide first or they decide first. Right. And if they decide yes and we decide no, does no hold? Oh, well, if you look at this, like what you yeah. would say it's is like, and. Yes. It's and. and. They all have to be it's in consensus. the same consensus. In my in thinking case, that if we made a, uh, we voted for something that could leave the town liable, that it would be the selectmen that would have the final, final say. say. Would, that's that would be that's one would you would think. think. That one would think, but when you look at what we're looking at and what you were saying you had read, I think at this point we need clarification before we make any decision because we'd be going, we need to find out what the channel is. Right. So well, I mean, do we know four. if they're if they're in contradiction? Do we? T I mean, I mean, I think we can. It's, it's not, not that late. Does anybody want to go down, take a quick look at the town charter? I tried to pull it up. No. Do you know well, no. I'm going to leave soon. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to you out. No. So um, I'm eating spinach. So do we want to? Do we need a motion to vote on this as far as what our next step is, or do we need to just leave it in your hands and go back to get the legal ruling on what the procedure is? I think we should have a motion soon. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that Rick goes back to the town to get clarification on the procedural steps in order to make a decision as to whether we vote on it before Board of Selectmen or Sele Board of Selectmen votes prior to our decision. And do both boards need to be in uh, agreement Freeman. for it to pass? And... And if, if, and if, if, if they are not, <laughs> how do we come to a resolution? And can we have them, Board of Selectmen, if they need to do it first, if we can have them, if, if we can get that. Yeah, and make sure you mention it too. Tell them that the confusion comes in that we, we read one document at the meeting, which is this, and it doesn't seem to match exactly the criteria as stipulated in the town charter. So in terms of in terms of moving this forward, it'd be great if the select if they need to do the first approval process, they can do it in our April twenty first. Would it be necessary to have somebody from Board of Selectmen here at our next meeting to discuss no, those? No, no, no. no. As long as they tell the us what they want is, to do. They know whether That's fine. they have if to If they tell us the procedure is we vote first, we'll make a motion and right. we'll have a discussion and we'll vote. So we okay. have a motion we need to second. If they say it's I'll second. Uh, <laughs> on <laughs> any more discussion? No, no more. All in favor? Yes. <laughs> I. And so the three things we're going to ask if both bodies have to approve, who approves first, and then what was there was a third and thing. If, if, to, if, to, if, what, if they're not the in agreement, we've looked at two documents and they're not in agreement. If both need to be in a, an agreement, if they are not, then what is the decision? Because quite frankly, if they have the, the, the either the first or and or the final say, oh, they what override. do we vote for? Right. Yeah. Can right. they override right. our decision? It's pointless. It's that's pointless. The case. pointless. Well, so it's it. but it, that is not how it reads. It yeah. reads yeah. as. It really seems like there needs to be consensus. To and if if I could just add a friendly amendment to the to the motion, and that is that we would like to to have the answer by our May meeting so that we can go forward with responding to the request. Right. Well, board of selectmen have to if board of selectmen have to vote first. Right. We want we'd like them to have voted. Right. Exactly. Clear. If that we'll if they're April twenty first meeting. meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good, you gave me something Have to do. Have fun with that, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like an and answer in the next 20 minutes, no, please. Point, yeah. point, and, and it's, it's such a slow season right now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 6J. 6J. Sponsor plaque at Chittenden Boardwalk. Park Boardwalk. There's a picture of clothes. I think I brought up the last meeting, and you folks want. I'm sorry, this picture came out real dark, but you wanted to talk. You wanted to know who, who was going to be on there and what it's going to look like. So, um... It's, 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 it's this big, it's eight and a half by 11. It's a small plaque, and they wanted to recognize the donors who are, in most cases, they're volunteers, groups like the, the Guilford uh, Foundation is on there, Parks and Rec Department. Um, What's it made out of? What's the material? 
I don't know if she told me. It, it'll be a weatherproof material. I, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. And this is know. going on a post where? It would go right near the boardwalk. It, it would be like a little pedestal. You just see the little picture yeah, right there. Oh, it's no, like, it's like a little, I got you. you oh, see I it? see it's yeah. a pedestal. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like uh, eight and a half by 11 and, you know, yeah. 42 inches high. Look at good. My only concern would be materials. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm sure the Connecticut Forest and Park Association, they, they make a lot of, they're going to make sure something's going to last. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're going to pay for it. There's no cost to us to do it. So we need to approve the sign the way it is um, intended to be constructed? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So they can they can order it. Mm -hmm. so we'll Time for dedication. Yeah. The plaque, as described, with the intent that Will would be in charge of placing it in the correct okay. location. Second. Yeah. Discussion. Any discussion? Um, no. I just want us to be sure that that um, that it will not look like it's a forest and park park, but that. Our sign that says Guilford Parks and Recreation Chittenden Park will be larger and be clear that this is just a like um, honoring the people who were volunteers, but that the park is a park and recreation. Park. Yeah. Well, this will be just by the boardwalk. We have a sign going into the park, which is our okay. our sign. Yeah. Okay. This this will be separated. I don't remember by a I'm seeing a sign there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any? Uh, just just so, another okay. quick question. Commercial vendors that might go on it because I know we've had issues no, in I the think, past. I think they're all. Um, Okay, it's done. Is it Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola? Or, yeah. or be, what was Red the thing Bull? we had with the, Beasley. Yeah. Uh, no, we had with the flag, State. with the, on the little cross net, wasn't it? Yeah. Coca-Cola? Yeah. For, for so the, uh, for the scoreboard. Okay, we had the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Carried unanimously. Okay, seven, new business. Food vendors at vendors at Jacob's Beach. I, Rick reminded me we wanted to bring that up. Uh, I solicited one particular person uh, while we were away, and I talked to him again since then. He, uh, Bill doesn't, it, every day would be a problem for him. He, he might consider like Friday and Saturday and a couple hours on Sunday, but an all day, and Naples would consider it if it's something we think we want to do. Those are the only two people who responded to me. The hot dog lady never got back to me. You know, Ralph, weekends would be the key time anyway because we wouldn't want to near when camp's there. Well, and okay. after 3 15, just like right, So why, why don't you leave that item in my park in the next meeting and I'll bring a report back okay. on whether people think they want to do it and what their hours might be. Are we still looking for vendors or do you want to just let you me know? If you have a, somebody that you think might want to get involved, we already have an ice cream vendor, right? right. You're talking about for the opening ceremony? No, just no. Uh, people just are willing to give it a shot for the Jacobs. weekend to see if they can make uh, yeah. make some money, and uh, you know have we'd have to figure out fifteen percent or one hundred dollars an ice cream cone. I don't know. <laughs> Jenny will write the policy. Uh, Ralph, are you talking <laughs> about right facility? on that? <laughs> are we talking about like a fruit food truck vendor? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cupcake truck, canola truck. Okay. Any anybody that might Cupcake. consider it. I mean, <laughs> what we don't want to do is hire three hot dog vendors. Right. But I know someone that sells lobster rolls and, and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 High Tide Gourmet. No. Oh, yeah. I just saw his van yeah, the other yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I know him. Do you want me to have him cut? Yeah. Cut so the parameters are they have to have a, a permit from the uh, police department, permit from the health department, and then his fee has got to come to us. And the way I work with the ice cream vendor, it's going to drive Jenny nuts. <laughs> 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 it's a different way, but it's just been. Um, uh, when we first started, it was like, you know, we don't got an RFP, and whoever offered the most money to the town, to our department, got it. You know, so, I mean, the, the minimum is like $1,000. We, we started as a minimum, and then anything beyond that, if they someone can beat that, then whoever gets the most. Per season. season. Per season. But per some, season. But sometimes the they, they wouldn't well, maybe is, want to do it every weekend. They, they might want to just be uh, Seven days a week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, see. Okay. Yeah, I think we may have to. Let's see if we got any interest first. Oh. Let's not spend a a lot of time on a, what might be a mute point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. Mm -hmm. Purchase of popcorn and snow cone machines. Okay, everybody hit me. I told Rick to go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting hungry. Come on. Where would they go? We uh, we can use our camp. It, it, it'll be a revenue producer for us. I mean, talking about the food, we can have the the gate guard make oh, popcorn out of Jacob's Beach, Beach, you know, uh, and okay. sell. We can sell popcorn on mm -hmm. weekends and. We rent these things numerous times throughout the course of the year, and to, to buy it, we'll, we will yeah. burn it back in a, in a season. Yeah. It makes so. total sense. I wasn't questioning the value. I didn't know where you were going to put them. Jacob's Various Beach. Various events. Uh, you know, yeah, special like events. the one on the green that they have the picnic on yeah. the green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 When the plays out there, can imagine you guys maybe doing it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. C, park ranger at Long uh, at, uh, at Lord Jacobs Beach functions. I'm just suggesting if we, if we, you know, when the chamber has their event, if they continue and still have it down at Jacobs Beach, or if we know there's a wedding going on down there or something, we have, you know, something beyond our 16, 17-year-old gate guards that have mm -hmm. some, and, and they leave at 5 anyway. And if this mm -hmm. thing's going beyond that, we have nobody there to sort of mm -hmm. keep an eye on the place. So I'm, okay. I'm just suggesting that maybe our weekend park ranger but we would maybe charge it to the group. So we're not absolutely. Saying, yeah. oh, absolutely. say, hey, look, we have somebody there. It's going to cost you whatever it is. Right. Um, yeah. um, so if you right. want to agree great. with that, we'll, we'll do that. Yes, definitely. That's Very important. Proactive. Yeah, I appreciate that. Last one, 7D. Just to let you know, we, we hired a new receptionist, Tracy. She's uh, doing a great job. She's been here a total of eight days, I guess, so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple days a week. And uh, she took Patty's position. Well, Patty moved over to the uh, seniors. Yeah. And um, you see, she's got very bright red hair, so you can't miss her. <laughs> and a uh, very cheerful face and doing a good job so far. Okay, good job. Uh, and the other thing, just no, you don't need for discussion. I just included the packet so you have it. The annual report that I had submitted. Very good, uh, good job. Yeah. Make sure yeah. that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance get a copy. I guess they do, yeah. I just sent it to Tom Hall and okay. distributed it. Rick, could you add my name to it? I didn't leave you out. They said who, who was on during the, that period of time? I was. Yeah, but they said from the start of the year. Because I specifically asked that. They said whoever was on at the start Why of the year. Why would that period. matter? We all know. No, it wasn't. I came on in January. But does somebody have to be on there for 12 months? Yeah, no. I, I asked that question. Oh, yeah. they, 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 know, they said whoever was on at the start of the year. Jack, I, I thought about that. I didn't want to leave you off, but he said, when, he said well, when did he start? And I said, well, I said, you got to go with who was on at the start. I'm sorry, I, I, but I did ask that. No, no. Can I have a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All, all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Meeting is adjourned at 8.20 p.m.